Hi, my name is Shalen Johan and welcome to my course Building REST API using ExpressJS, MongoDB and Design Patterns on .NETx. I am Microsoft MVP, Technical Consultant Corporate Trainer. This course is all about how to build RESTful services in Node.js with the help of ExpressJS, MongoDB and recommended design patterns. And finally, test your API with the help of Postman and deploy it to the IAS. So in this course, I will teach you here how to set up your express project from scratch. So I will tell you he, there how we can define the model using the mongos, how we can define the controller and how we can implement over there the positive design pattern. Everything we will set up here from scratch. So here model and the relationship we will define here with the help of mongos. We will implement the repository design pattern and I will show you here the way how you can use async and await to create the promises in your node.js to write the asynchronous code. So whenever you are willing to write the asynchronous code, their async and await will help you. Then I will show you the way how we can create the base controller for code reusability, how we can define the routes here for the different different APIs and finally we will perform the crude operations. And all the operation I will test here using the Postman. So I will use here Postman tool for testing all the crude operation. And finally, I will show you the way how you can use Gulp for build task automation. So whenever you are willing to provide the build of your code, how you can provide the build with the help of Gulp. And finally, I will show you the way how you can deploy the code on your local eyes if you are having the Windows machine. To get started with this training program, make sure you are familiar with the Node.js and MongoDB and you have installed the Node.js, VS Code, MongoDB Compass and Postman. So these are the necessary tools. Make sure you have installed on your machine to get started with this training program. I hope you will join me in this journey to learn how to build the REST API using ExpressJS, MongoDB and the design patterns on .NETx. So see you in the session. Let's understand how the Express API project we are going to build in this training program. So here we will create the Node.js server because Express.js is built on the top of Node.js and here we will define the models using the Mongoose because Mongoose is a ODM which will help us to query the MongoDB in object oriented fashion. So models we will define here using the Mongoose. We will implement a repository design pattern also so that we can reuse our query logic. We don't need to rewrite the same query logic again and again. So here I will show you the way how we can implement the generic repository pattern and the specific repository pattern. And here for database, we will use MongoDB. So MongoDB, MongoDB database, we will query here with the help of Mongos. Here we will define the controllers. So the controllers label we will write our presentation logic. So whatever the request a user will make. So that request handling code will be write in the controller and data access code will be write in the repository. And we will have the routes also. So obviously we are going to have multiple, multiple APIs here. So for multiple APIs, we will have the multiple routes. So we will define the roots section separately. There we will define the roots for product category and for other entities also we can define. And for testing the API, I will use here Postman. So here I'm not willing to create any front end, but if you're willing to create the front end, so based upon the same API, you can create the front end using Angular, React.js, like any other front end framework you can use. But here in this training program, I will show you only backend part. Front end, I will not create over here. And here to simplify a element code, I like to simplify a development process because what will happen when you will write the code again and again, we need to do the changes in the code and you need to again and again restart the Node.js server. But that server, you don't need to restart manually. So there is a package we will use here node monster so node monster is very helpful for building the express server like node.js server in the development 
so this would be helpful in the development mode and here we will use gulp also so when we will create the build of our project so that we can deploy it on the windows machine like anywhere so we need here gulp as the task manager so we will automate the build task with the help of gulp here so these are the various things i am going to cover in this training program so that you will get to know how to build the express api in better way with all the available tools and the best practices so let's get started setting up project now let's see how we can set up our express application from scratch so here i will use the vs code id so make sure you have also installed the vs code to get started with this training program so what i will use here i will use here at the command prompt to set up my express js project so what i'm doing here let's create a folder anywhere so this is my command prompt and what i'm doing i'm creating a folder at the desktop so let me define the folder name let's say express api so now this folder i can open using my vs code so let me open the vs code id so this is my vs code id so let me use the file and there is option here open folder so let me open this folder from the desktop it is express api so using the vs code uh, what i can do i can open here a terminal so you open here new terminal and here instead of using the command prompt you can use command prompt also so just go to that location and here you can initialize your node.js application so i'm not going to initialize the node.js application using the command prompt directly i'm just going to use the same command prompt from the vs code so now here let me initialize my node.js application so just run the command npm in it to initialize your node.js application so now it will ask for few parameters few inputs so just define the names here so now it is asking for the package name it means your project name by default it is suggesting the package name as we are having the folder name it is express api that's fine version number is also fine description i can define here express rest api and these things you can change later on also entry point you can define here let's say app.js that would be the entry point let's say test command if you're willing to write the unit test cases so don't mention any test command here but if you're not willing to write you can leave it blank git repository if you're willing to mention here uh, the git repository where you are willing to reply the code so right now i'm not connecting with the git i'm just making it blank keyword you can mention here let's say express it would be here uh, mongodb and then node.js so this keyword would be helpful when you will deploy your code on the github as a public repository so that time in the search these keywords will help you but if it is a private repository or like anything else so we are not going to make it searchable so that's fine i have mentioned the keywords here author i can mention author name let's say shalendra license fine here it's looking fine yes so you can see here it's added here a package.json file and here whatever the values you are willing to change you can change here also so if you will look at here here the main file is app.js so when we will start our node.js application it will by default look for a file named as app.js so right now we don't have any file with the name app.js we will define now so that i can create my server using the express.js so before using the express.js i need to install here few packages so now here let's install here the package for express so just run the command npm i for install then define the package name here express and i'm just going to define this package as a production dependency so i'm just using here dash dash save flag now let me enter it will download the express js and it will add a section for dependencies you can see it's added here dependency section for the express let me download the other necessary packages also so i'm just going to install here the mongoose because mongoose we will use here for defining the models and their relationship 
so let me install here the package mongoose then that is save so now it installed in the mongoose and here we are creating the api so in the api we usually written the status code so for a status code uh, there is a package named as http status codes that also i'm going to install here so let me clear the screen uninstall the package here npm i then package name is here http dash status then codes that is save so this is the package i'm just going to install here so that the status codes i can get so instead of doing the hard code for the status code while attending the things i will take the help of this http status code package now that means install it and all these packages you can find out on npmjs.com if you are willing to check here so there is a npm js.com here you can find out all these packages let's say if you are looking for http status codes you will find out this package here so this is the package even this package statistics you can also refer here so the weekly these are the peep this is the weekly download for this package you can find out here same i just using here so any package which you are willing to use in your express application you can download from here so you can see here instead of doing the hard code now we are using here http status dot okay http status internal server error so this way we will do the same thing here with the help of this package here and for using the node mon because for running my server i will use a node mon make sure you have installed the node mon globally so node mon is the package i am installing globally under it so here dash g flag is here for global installation i am not installing at the folder level i am installing it globally so this way i have installed express package mongoose http status codes and node mon these packages we have installed now and now let me download here one more package for setting up the environment so for defining the environment files for the development uh, for the testing in the production so there is a package here dot environment so you can find out that package here dot env that is available here so dot env package will help us to load the environment specific variables or you can say the environment specific files you can see how many people are downloading this package weekly so this is the most popular package over the npmjs.com the people are using with their node js application so same package i'm installing here so npm i it would be here dot env then save so this is the package i'm installing now for the environment so this is the way we are installing it here for environment and here it shown us the way how we can set up the global things how we can set up the environment specific things so all the sample code is available here how to use it so all the necessary packages we have installed for our express js application now I start writing the code for building a server so for building a server i need to create here a app.js file so let me add here a file app.js so in the app.js file let me import here the express package so it would be here const and express so i'm using here es6 syntax that is recommended to use now so i'm just importing here express package in this way now using the express i can create the express application so let me create the application for express so this is the way i created my express application uh, now here let me define here a express server so for server we need the port number so port number i'm just using here constant port equal to it would be here process dot environment 
then port number if port number is not available i'm just defining here 3000 is a default port number so right now i have not added any environment specific file i will add it later on then we will configure it using the dot environment packet so now it will take the 3000 as a port number but when i will configure the environment specific variable that time it will pick up the things from the environment file so now let's call the method here app dot listen pass the port number and now using the callback function i can show the message to user where my server is running so here i can mention here back text and here i can define server is running at define here localhost then port number so it would be here port number this way i am mentioned so this way i specified my server here right now i have not defined any routes here it will only show to me how the server is running so using the node i can run it here node then app so you can see it is showing me server is running at the port number 3000 oh there is a spelling mistake localhost so you can see here i just change the value but it's not reflecting here because server is not restarted you need to stop it here using control c then run it again then you will find out the changes so here a better way is here instead of using the node we will now use the node monster so that whatever the changes you will do while writing the code it automatically restart our node j server so i will not use here node command i will use here node mon and whatever the main file you are having in a packet dot js and you can see it is here app dot js if you will mention only node mon it automatically pick up this main file and start my server you can see it's going to pick up the app dot js file and it is running now let me show you here how it is working so here i can change the message let's say my server is running at so as soon as i will save it it automatically restart the server now save it it's restarted my server and showing the text message so now i don't need to worry about to restart my server again and again now it is taking care by the node monster package so this is the beauty of node monster for handling the things so we set up our basic project now we will add the routing we will define the models and other things mongoose for models and relationship so here we will define the models and relationship with the help of mongoose here so i will create here two document so for two documents we will have here the model for product that will contain here underscore id name unit price and category id field so these fields we are going to put on each document so obviously we will create the products collection in the mongodb database similarly we will create the categories collection also in the mongodb database containing each document with two field underscore id and name and between these two collection we will define the one to many mapping so the one to many mapping we will define here with the help of mongoose so mongoose will help us to to define the models as well as the relationship between the mongodb document if you have a link to learn about the mongoose so there is a mongoosejs.com so from the mongoosejs.com you will find out the things so this is the mongoose js.com here you can find out the information about the mongoose you can refer the documentation here how to create the model how to define the mappings here what are the various data types are available every information is available on this website even the same website i will refer for defining the models model schema and defining the mappings here defining models and relationship using the mongoose so let's see how we can use the mongoose for defining models and their relationship so what i'm doing here my server is already running so here i'm adding a folder with the name models in the models folder i will define my models 
so let me add first model for category so i'm adding a new file with the name category dot model dot js similar to i'm adding here one more file with the name product dot model dot js so here as per the naming convention i'm using here product dot model so that we get to know it's a model we are having now here using the mongoose we can define the thing so let me import the mongoose package here which we already installed so require the news here mongoose it is coming now here let's define the schema a variable here so i'm just creating here constant for a schema so i'm just using here a schema sorry it's a mongoose dot schema so mongoose dot schema so with the help of a schema class we can define the schema for the mongodb model so now let me define here on the schema here so i'm just going to define the schema for category so it is here category a schema i'm defining so using the schema class i can define the schema so in the constructor we are defining the field here for the schema so here by default field we have in mongodb is underscore id which work as a primary key so this type we can specify here type would be here object type so here the type would be here the object id so object id is available again on mongoose schema type so what i can do here in instead of defining it at here i can define the top label constant and let me define here object id it would be here mongoose dot schema then types then object id so any type we will find out here i'm just accessing the object id so now this object id i can define here as type then i'm willing to make it auto generated so for auto generated make it here auto true so it will be generated automatically when we will add a new document now let me define the name for name i'm just using here type again so type would be here string then define the required i'm willing to make it not null so i'm just using here required as true so i just made the name as required so if you will not pass the value for name it will throw the exception so this is the model label validation we applied simply now here one more thing i'm willing to mention over here so when you will create any document and when the document you are updating so internally mongodb maintain a version key so that version key value is automatically managed by the mongodb every time when you are updating the value so if you are not willing to maintain that version key so you can configure that settings here in the options after the schema so in the schema there is a schema option here you can define whatever you are willing to enable whatever you are willing to disable so if you are willing to enable and disable the things at the document label so in the scheme option we can define the things so what i'm doing here i'm just going to disable here a uh, version key false because i'm not willing to maintain the revision of the document but if you're willing to mention the revision of the document you don't need to mention this option okay so now let's define the schema for the category model so i'm just defining here now model here for category so it would be here category equal to mongoose dot model then define the name of the collection so i'm just willing to define the name of the collection as categories then category schema it is a schema not the scheme uh, by mistake I mentioned a scheme schema this way and finally export this model so it would be here module dot exports then category so this way we have specified our category schema as well as category model 
the similar way we need to define here for product also oh by mistake i added complete thing in the product dot model so let me copy it from product to category because it is for category similar way let me do change here wherever i'm willing to define for product so it would be here let's say product now i need to just change the name here so it is here let's say products here also it is here product constant product and product here also and what are the other fields you are willing to define for product let me define here so other fields are here unit price and category id so let me define here for unit price for unit price i'm using here number it is here javascript number i have specified here javascript number and we can make it required also so it is here let's say required colon true and now we need to define the category id also because obviously the product would be connected to a category so i'm adding here a field for category id but here category id field should connected with the category document so here the type of the category id would be object id because if you will look at in the category schema the type of this underscore id is object id so same underscore id now we will map with this product category id also so that's i'm defining here type colon object id which we already defined at the top level now we're using the reference document i can define the reference of the document so as a reference what is the name of the collection it is categories let me copy this name and put here so this way we have defined the reference of the category in the product schema so this is the way how we specified one to many relationship here so using the reference document we are defining here we are not using here embedded document because here the better way to manage the relationship between the product and categories it should be here a reference so i'm using here reference document so these two models we have specified product as well as category so now both are ready to use a database configuration now let's see how we can define the mongodb connection string so that we can connect with the mongoose and further we can query our database so for this one just do one thing just define here a one more folder with the name config so i'm adding here a folder with the name config like this way and now here in the config folder let me define a configuration file for the database so it would be here db.js now here using the mongoose we will define the connection string so i'm just defining here mongoose equal to require uh, let me import here mongoose here after this i need the mongoose url so as we accessed here uh, the port number is specific to the environment similarly we will ac access the mongodb url specific to the environment because in the development environment we can have the different mongodb connection and for the production environment you will have the different mongodb connection so what i'm doing here i'm just going to access here mongo on dp connection url let's say it is url and let me import here process dot environment then mongodb url so usually we define all the things in capital letter so i'm just using here mongodb underscore url so this we will define at the in the environment file so let me add here environment file also so that we can define all these things here so for environment file let's add here a file at the root level i'm adding a file with extension dot env don't mention the file name just mention the extension dot env so same as we have the mongodb url let me mention here mongodb url define the connection string so i'm having right now the mongodb in my local machine so in the local machine we are having the port number 
27017 same i'm just mentioning here mongo db then do mention the local host local host and the port number would be here 27017 this way then define your database name so database name is let's say express api would be my database so right now we don't have any database with the name express api we will create it on the fly when we will access it first time if it is your mongodb live url you can mention the mongodb live url also it can be used from the cloud it can be used from the mongodb cloud also now define here port number also so let's say port number is here 5000 so this is my environment file so this environment file i need to load in our server so this is my server file app.js here i need to load this environment file to set up the things otherwise it will not work so at the top label let me set up or you can say let me load the environment file load environment file so let me use here require and here using the dot env package i can configure it now just configure it so this is the way now the environment file will be loaded through the server so now this environment port would be the port now this 5000 and wherever we are using the mongodb connection there also we will get the mongodb url whatever we have mentioned over here if you will check now in your running node mon server now the port number has been changed from 3000 to 5000 as soon as i loaded this environment file so this is the way previously it was running with 3000 now it is running with the 5000 it means our environment file has been loaded successfully so perfect now let me complete the code here for mongodb connection so here using the mongoose connect method i can define the things so let me define here mongoose and then connect method then pass the mongodb url i'm passing here mongodb url and you have to define the connection options here so here i'm just defining the connection option so there is a use new url parser option because now the mongodb using the 4.x option so i'm not willing to use here any option which is supported in mongodb uh, 2.x like 3. Point, or like 3.1 so let's say we are using a use new parser option if you're willing to find out here what are the various options are here available in mongoose db so this is the mongoosejs.com here you will find out all the information about the connection so here we are having docs and there is the option here for depreciation so there is a depreciation docs we will find out so there is open here the depreciation warning here you will find out what are the various options like use new url parser there is option here use find and modify there is a use unified topology option so this option i'm defining here so that we can make the connection properly and whatever the the warning we will face i'm just going to remove from here so i'm just using here use a unified topology true so use the latest engine here at the mongodb label for processing the things then i'm using here use find and modify method so in mongodb we are having the find and modify method which we will use for modify the things so just exclude the warning if we are using this method use find and modify and i'm just mentioning here colon false option let me use here text wrap so this is the way i mention here the various options if you will not mention these options that is also fine it will make the connection only this one is fine we just need the mongodb url these options are optional 
but you will define it's fine now here we need to find out whether the connection has been made with mongodb or not so we can do listening for the event emitted by the mongodb connection so there is a event name connected if it is connected with the mongodb so here i will get the response if it has been connected properly so in the response i will console the message here it is connected it is a connected now sometime it happens there is any error while connecting with the mongodb so let me listen for the error event also error and now here console the error not the message so here i will get the error so let me console the error if there is any error while making the connection with the mongodb now to check it here in the app.js file i need to load this mongodb configuration file so at the top label let me load this mongodb connection so i'm just going to set up the db connection at the top level so let me import it here require and it would be here config slash db so this way i'm just loading it here now save it and now let me check in the console in the console if you will see there is any error while i'm connecting to it it's saying here is use find and modify not supported actually by mistake i mentioned over there user so there is a spelling mistake it is here use find and update let me save it here and let me check what other things are I'm missing here it is say here mongo parser error so make sure everything we have defined here properly use unify topology use new url parser use find and modify false and mongodb url also we have mentioned it properly so if you will look at here there is a spell there is a typo error it's a mongodb it's a mongodb now save it and let me run the server again now you can see it is connected properly so there was typing error so n was missing so now properly it is mongodb and here also there was error here for user so these errors we have fixed now so properly it is running the server it's connected with the database also so now database has been set up properly now we need now we need to write the logic to perform the database operation creating controller now let's see how we can define the controller for product api and category api so at the controller label we will write our logic to receive the input from the end user and then we will process it so right now i'm not going to implement the repository pattern initially let's first understand without repository pattern what will happen then later on i will implement the repository pattern here so what i'm doing here i'm just adding a folder for controllers so controllers folder i added now add a controller for category so it would be here category dot controller dot js and now here using the express router class i can define the things over here so here what i'm doing i'm not i'm not going to write the simple api here where directly with the help of a router class we define the routes so actually the routing i will separate into the different file and here i will write only logic so that logic from the es6 we can write within a class if you are willing to follow the es5 we can create here a constructor function there you can define the things but here i'm following the es6 style so in the es6 style we are having the class and i can define my controller name as category controller if you are from the background of java c sharp or like any other object oriented language so you can understand it easily it's a simple category controller class i'm creating here so let me define here the methods which we are willing to define here 
so here i'm willing to define the method for fetching all the category so i'm defining a method get all in the get all method i will re i will receive the request and response and here from the request we will get the data in the request and at the response object we will we will add the data so what i will do here we are going to query everything from the category model and product model here so at the top level let me import here category model bigots for category so i'm just going to import here for category it would be here require uh, let me require here it would be here models slash category model i imported it here so now using the category model i can fetch the data from the mongodb here directly so let me write the code here it would be here category then there is a method find for finding all the records or you can say all the documents in the category collection then using the the promises i can call the then method here finally it will return the documents if it is successful so if it is returning the document to us so finally return the document with the success status code so i'm using a response then i can call the method response then send this way and finally return the documents here like this way so it is a arrow function properly so sometime it happens you will get the error so we are having here catch in the catch we will capture the error and finally whatever error we are getting we can return that error to the user also so use a response then there is a method send and here i can pass the error from here so it would be here error i'm just passing and what we can do here when we are returning the response from our api so that time we can return the status code also so by default the status code would be here 200 in both the cases but how we will distinguish it is success it is failed in that case we should explicitly return the status code so we already installed here a package for http status so if we will look at here we are having the package here for http status codes so this one i will use here to find out the status code so i'm just using here http status that would be http status codes equal to let me require it here like this way so now using this one we can return the status code explicitly so it would be here response dot it would be here status and then return the status code it would be here http status code then ok for success similar way for failed like if there is any error i can return the status code as internal server error it would be here internal server error if there is any issue while fetching the data from the database even here when there is an internal server error you can pass the message also so in place of passing the error object directly the better way is here you should pass here the message so as a message we, sh we should pass here the object so let me show you here the way how you should pass the message so i'm passing here message colon then message text you can mention it so it would be let's say internal server error if things are not proper so this is the way it will return to us internal server error in the message so here this is the way how we are returning the status code as 500 and this is the message it will return to the client as internal server error if it is not correctly returning the things and right now i'm just defining only one method and finally let me 
export it here module dot exports it would be here a user it would be here category controller so it is here category controller so this way we have defined it now properly at the same level we can write the code here for adding a new category let me complete one more method so that we can add a new category so it would be here add and now let me define a request comma response and then arrow function and here using the category model i can create a new category by calling the create method and now here from the request i need to fetch the data also so let me use a constant obj and you can see it is actually body which will return as the category model so request dot body i am receiving it here now and in the create let me pass the receive body here then here call the then method for adding the new category and again i'm using here promises then use here return and it would be here response then create it it should be here status code status so what would be the status status code would be here created if it is created successfully that is a created and finally you can return the created document also this way and if there is any error so using the catch i can capture the error also so it would be here internal server error which we are returning while adding the category so the category controller we have defined here similar way we can define the controller for product also but product i will define later on first complete with the category defining routes so far we have created only category controller we have not specified any route here so let's see how we can define the routes so for defining the routes just do one thing just add here a one more folder with the name routes and in the routes i will add a routes for category so i'm adding a file here with the name let's say category dot routes dot js and here i will access the category controller for defining the routes so let me define here the express application here so it would be here express i'm just going to import so require on the express and using the express router class we will define the things so let me define here a router using the express router class here express router class and now let me import here the user controller also so it would be here import the category controller so it is here category controller so i'm just going to import here require and it is here proper path we need to mention here it is here controllers then category controller so it is a category controller not the user so i have mentioned the category controller now let me define here category controller object so what i'm doing here i'm just going to create the category controller object category control object so this is a class actually category controller now let me use the category controller class to create the object so using the object i can access all the category controller class methods get all add so these two methods i can access because this class object we have created here so here i'm using the export if you not mention the export i cannot access this class outside this file so this is the export i'm using here for exporting this category class outside this js file and here using the require i'm importing that class here and now by calling the new keyword i'm creating that category controller class object and now using the router i can define the route for my application so i'm using here get for making the get request and what method you are willing to call let me call here category controller and it would be here get all method 
एंड हेयर एम पासिंग द गेट ऑल मैथड ओनली रेफरेंस आई एम नॉट कॉलिंग इट एज ए मैथड बिकॉज वैन यू विल कॉल इट एज ए रेफरेंस सो इट ऑटोमेटिकली पॉइंट टू द दिस एरो फंक्शन एंड हेयर यू विल रिसीव द रिक्वेस्ट एंड रिस्पॉन्स ऑटोमेटिकली वन द यूजर विल ट्राई टू फैच दिस एक्शन हेयर सो डोंट कॉल इट एज ए मैथड जस्ट पास द रेफरेंस ऑफ द गेट ऑल मैथड सिमिलर वे वी नीड टू कॉल हेयर add method also it is here add method and finally export so module dot export it would be here a router class this way so this way router class i am exporting here so that i can import somewhere else so in our application we will have multiple apis so this is the routes we have specified only for category similarly we will define the routes for product and you can define the routes for other apis also so what you should do here is should define a common root file where all the routes we will add and that common file we will import in the app.js file so what i'm doing here i'm just adding here a common root file for all the apis so name would be let's say api.roots.js So it will be the common roots file for all the APIs. So here the same practice we need to follow here as we define. Uh, let me define here Express and Express app. Here I specified, and now here we need to import all the roots file here. So to this router we need to tell which API root you are willing to specify. So this time we need to use here use method. and the use i will tell here what api url i'm willing to provide for category and product so it is here for category i'm just using here category as a prefix so all the methods in the within the category it will have with category prefix similar way we will have for product also similar way we will have for user also so let me import here on the category roots file so i'm just going to import here category routes file similarly we will import the the product routes file which we will define later on so module dot export it would be here router so what we will do here we will define a each collection route separately and the common routes at this one place now this common root file we need to import in the app.js file so that our node js server will get to know these are the api routes available to serve to the user so now in the app.js file uh, let me import these routes so make sure you are importing these routes after the environment file and the database connection so just import after these two set of file don't try to import before it so i'm just going to import my api all routes and the name i'm giving here api routes and then require and then i'm just going to use here routes slash api routes this way and now here using the express application i can specify the routes for the api so it would be here api routes which i'm using here app dot use and here let me define the prefix so for api i'm defining the prefix here api because your application can have other routes also this way so all the api routes we have defined as a prefix to the api now let me check the server whether it's running fine or not so it is running fine nothing is wrong now here when you will make the post request so that time we will pass the data as a json document so here we need to add here json serializer as well otherwise it will not able to read the data from the request body so after the express app let me add here the json serializer available in the express so express dot json this is mandatory to get the data from the request body otherwise we will not get it so if we will look at in the category controller we are trying to read the data from the request body so this will return the value when it is having this json setting otherwise you will not get the value here 
and make sure you are passing the data from the front end as a JSON. So let me check the API whether it's working fine or not. So make sure it is running fine. So in the next video, I will show you the way how you can test the API using the Postman. Testing REST API. So for testing the REST API, I will use here the most popular REST client that is Postman. So Postman can be downloaded from the Postman official website. So if you're willing to download it here, there is a website here, postman.com. So from the postman.com, you can download the application here. I have already downloaded on my local system. You need to download it here depending upon your operating system. So this is my Postman app. So there is option here for making the new request. And here I can mention the local host then port number it is 5000 uh, which you can check it here when your application is running so if you will check it here my application is running on the port number 5000 here same i'm using then api shells api name so if you will look at here the common name is here if you will look at it is api and if you will see in the api routes it is category so I'm just mentioning here API slash category. Then what method you are willing to call? If you will look at in the category controller, method name is here get all and add. So one of the method you can call here, but make sure you are making the get and post request. If you will look at here, we are making the get request and here it should be the post request this way. So it's updated the things automatically, you don't need to do anything. So this is here for get request, this is here for post request. Now let me make the get request for get all. Send it. And if you look at here, I'm getting the error. It is showing here for not for error. So make sure you have mentioned the things correctly. So if you will look at here, we are having here only shells. We have not mentioned the get all. So that method name is not going to be count here. So it should be here only API slash category when you're making the get request. So you can see I'm getting here empty array. If you want to call it with the get all method. So what you need to do here, you need to mention here get all this way. If you're willing to call it using the add, you need to mention here add like this way. So now you will get it here using the get all. Now, if I will try to make it this one, I will get the error. It is here for not for error now. So let me use here and get all and then make the send request again. This time I'm getting here empty. Now let me try to add a new category here by making the post request. And for post, it is here add and you're passing the data as a request body. And as a request body, I'm using here raw format and the type should be here JSON. So make sure when you are making the post request, that time you have selected this row. So this is the raw option you have selected. Then the data type is JSON. Now you need to pass here the JSON object. So the JSON object should be here, let's say name of the category. So let's say normal name of the category is box. And if you look at in the model, in the model, we are having only two field over there. Uh, we are having the field name as underscore ID and name. And name is here auto, ID is auto generated here. So ID you don't need to pass, only you need to pass here name. Same thing I'm doing here, I'm only passing the name. I'm not passing the underscore ID. Let me make the post request to test it. Now click on the send button. If you will look at here, it is returning the status code as 201. And also it is returning the created document. So it's perfectly created my category. That means my REST API is working fine for the category. If you want to verify it, then click on the get all method and make the get request. Send. And you can see now it is not the empty array. It is containing here a one document with the box. Same you can check it here using the Mongo compass. So make sure you are having the MongoDB compass to look into your MongoDB database. 
So database we have not created. Database is created on the fly through the Mongoose because it is the beauty of the MongoDB. When you build access any database first time on the flight, it has been created. Similar way, when you build access the collection first time, it will create the collection on the fly. So same thing it is happening here. So you can see there is Express API database containing the categories collection. And here you can see I'm having the underscore ID as an object type and the name as a box. So perfectly, if you will look at only one collection is created for us, it's not created the collection for product. But when I will access the product controller for adding the product, I like for getting the product, that time it will create the collection for products also. So this is the way our REST API is working fine and it's created the category collection also for us. If you will look at in the category controller, we have written the code to fetch the data from the category collection. In the similar way, we will write the code for product also. But if you will look at here, it's a common code. The same code I need to write for product, the same code I need to write for others model also. So why not to use a way so that I can reuse this style instead of writing it again and again. So in that case, we should start implementing the design patterns here. So what I will do here, I will implement the repository design pattern here. So let's first understand what is repository design pattern. So repository design pattern mediates between the domain and data mapping layers, acting like an in-memory collection of domain objects. So this is the standard definition given by the Martin Fowler. So Martin Fowler is an author of the design patterns books. Now let's understand in the simple way. Repository pattern act as an abstraction between the application and the data source. It means instead of directly accessing the data source in the application, if you will look at in our case right now what is happening in my category controller, where I need to write the presentation logic, I am directly accessing the data source to perform the database operation. So I will not follow this practice. What I will do, I will create an abstract layer. I will create the abstraction. So how that abstraction can be done? So we will create a separate class now with the name repository and the repository class we will write the code to perform the database operation. And wherever we need the same database operation again and again, I don't need to write the code again and again. I will just use that class for accessing the database operation on category on product and on any other model. So same thing I'm just going to do here. So if you will follow the repository design patterns, what would be the advantages? Now let's first have a look at the advantage of the repository design pattern. So it minimizes the duplicate query logic. So obviously we will access the category and the product data again and again. So the query logic would be duplicate at the control level. But if I will move everything into a separate file, so that duplicate query logic would be minimized now. And you can say it would be very less. It supports separation of concern also, because if you will look at each application having the various concern, like we are having the presentation concern, we are having the database access concern, so those concern now we will separate. So now the category controller would be responsible for writing the presentation logic. And now the data query logic, we will move to the separate class. So this way we will start supporting the SOC also. Even it make the unit testing easier. So further, whenever you are willing to write the unit test cases for the category controller, for the product controller, that unit testing would be easier also. So these would be the benefit to implement the repository design pattern in your application. So in the next video, I will show you here the way how we can implement the repository design pattern. Implementing repository pattern. Now let's see how we can implement the repository pattern in our code so that we can minimize the duplicate query logic. 
so here what i'm doing i'm just adding here a folder for repository and there i will write the query logic so i'm adding here a folder for repositories this is my repositories folder perfect and this repository folder i'm adding here a file where i will write the code for my repository so repository dot js now let me define here a class for repository so when you're writing the code for repository so in repository we follow the two ways to implement the repository pattern the first one is a generic repository pattern and the second one is here a specific repository pattern so in the generic repository pattern we add all the commonly used methods there so whatever the common operation we can perform on each and every document we will define in this generic repository or you can say this one we can use as a base repository also and what are the specific operation we will have we will define in the specific repository like for product we will define in the product repository for category we will define in the category repository so this repository class would be common or you can say it will act as a base class for others repository so what i can do here let me define the class name as base repository and it's going to be the common for others repository here and here also let me change it here from repository to base dot repository so that it is understood now now i will define here all the commonly used methods which we can use for all the models to perform the crude operation so let me define here constructor in the constructor i will receive the collection for which collection i am willing to perform the crude operation so that collection i will pass from the drive class and let me define here a member in this base repository with the name collection and to this member assign the value for collection which i am receiving in the constructor level so in esx class we define the member of a class at the constructor level using the this keyword so now this is a instance member of the class which we can access anywhere within this class so we cannot define the instance member at the class level in the esx syntax in esx syntax we can only define the class member within the constructor same thing i have done here now let me define all the commonly used method let's say find all is a method of which we can use to fetch all the documents within a collection so this find all method i'm using here let me use here return and using the collection this dot collection i can call the find method and now i'm using here a lean lean is a method in the mongoose to fetch the data i'm just going to call it execute because i'm just going to execute of the result set here so that it will return the documents what are the documents we are willing to fetch from the database here so this way i'm just returning the all the documents in the database it is here find all or you can define the method it's get all it's up to you similar way i can define the method here for find by id also so find by id so method name i'm defining the exactly same as we are having the method in the mongoose now similar way use here return this dot collection and i can write the code here find by id it is a method in mongoose then pass the id here and here the mongoose return the promises so this method is actually returning the promises that promises i will use wherever we will call this method here so let me define here all the methods which we can use to perform the crude operation on each model class similar way let me define here create and here i will get the model that model i will use for creating the new document so return it would be here this dot collection and then create and then pass the model this way 
you can define either its model you can define either its dog it's up to you now let me define here similar way in the update method for updating the existing document so for updating the existing document we can use here the method find by id and update find by id and update so this is also the built-in method in mongoose i'm just going to use it here so here first i need to pass the id it would be here model dot underscore id so if you will look at in the category model and in product model everywhere we are using underscore id as a primary key so same i'm just using here in base repository to get it here so mod underscore id then i'm passing the complete model here similar way i can write the code here for delete by id so it would be here delete by id so we are having a method find by id and delete and if you will look at here all the methods are following the camel case so it is starting from the small letter then after that whatever the new words are coming there is starting from the capital letter find by is b is capital i is capital a is capital u is capital so same you need to follow here and we need to export it so that we can access it in other files so i'm just using here module dot export it would be here base repository so what we did here now what are the common methods like what are the method you can perform on each and every model class we have added here now so that we don't need to write the same code again and again for each model class now we can define the repository separately so i can define the repository for category let me first define for category here so it would be a category dot repository then js so all the specific methods would would be applicable to only category we will define here so base repository is the example of generic repository pattern and now category repository would be the example of a specific one so let me first complete it so i'm just going to import here base repository class in this way so use here require and then i'm just going to use here base repository and if you will look at in the base repository collection is not defined here it is a just on the fly so what i need to do here this collection i will pass to this base repository class so i need to import here the category model so it would be here category model uh, let me import here so through models then category i'm importing now let me define a class for category repository this way now let me inherit it from the base repository class so when you will define the inheritance in es6 it is mandatory to call the parent class constructor by using the super call and the super call i need to pass the collection so here this is the category model we imported and this i'm passing here through the super call so in the base repository constructor i will receive it here then it will work all the operation for the category similar way we will pass for product and user also and all these operation will start working for user and product also so this is the way i don't need to do anything by default all the methods which are the part of the base repository now are the part of this category repository class now let me export it here so that i can exit it module dot export it would be here category repository now i did it properly so now in place of writing the code at category controller label explicitly now through this category repository i will complete it so here this code now we will change through a repository so what i will do here now here i don't need to import the model i need to import here only repository 
so let me import here repository shell as it would be here category repository and in the category repository this code i will write so now what it would be here let me define here the constructor constructor at the constructor label let me define here the repository like this dot repo it would be here now new category repository so let me define its proper name category repository and it would be here now a new category repository what i did here now and now by using this repo i can do all the operations so it would be here this dot repo then i can use here find all to find all the documents in this collection simply and here also i can replace it here let's say this dot repo then create this way so I, I now just replace it with the repository now let me check it whether it's working fine or not it's you can see it's running the things properly here now let me test it with get all it is returning the data here to me successfully but if you look at, at the code still we can reuse the things because this is also the common code again so as we added the base repository in the similar way we can add the base controller here so that code i will show you in the next video how we can create a base controller for the code reusability creating base controller if you look at the code here these are the common methods again at the controller level so the similar code i need to write for product also and the similar code i need to write for user also so instead of writing the same code again and again uh, what we can do here we can create a base controller and there we can reuse it as we created the base repository so let me define here one thing uh, let me add here a base controller and move this entire code to there base controller dot js and now define the class name as here let's say class base controller and now let me define here the constructor and in the constructor i will get the repository class based upon that we will perform the operation so it is a repository class define the repo object so it would be here new it is this new repo class this way i define it here so now whatever the code are the part of this category let me cut from here and completely move in the base controller class and finally just module dot export it would be here base controller let me do here correction so this base controller class should be inherited by this category controller so it would be here extend then base controller and here let me import it here constant base controller it would be the require then it would be here base controller and now here when you're using the inheritance in the esx so this is mandatory to call the base class constructor using super and here let me pass the category repository reference don't pass the object just pass the reference and in the base controller i will create this object if you will look at in the base controller i will receive in the repository class parameter and this object i'm creating and now this wrapper i'm using here for fetching all the document for adding the document this way it is happening but still here we have not added the reference of http status code so let me cut this http status code from here and i need to define in the base controller at the top level because here we are using it 
so this is the way we are passing the category repository here and make sure you are passing the category repository here also and the same i am accessing now so you don't need to pass in the constructor just pass here that's fine so now what will happen what are the methods we will define now in the base controller class those would be by default the part of this category controller if you want to check it here let me check it here you can see in the in between the application was crashed because i have not added the reference of http response over there but now it is running fine perfectly now let me check it here how it is responding click over here it's responding now properly so my base controller is working fine without any issue so this is the way how we are doing it here properly here so now here i can write the code for others also and here one more thing we can do here if you will look at these are the common status we again and again are going to handle let's say for okay for internal server error so what we can do here for all these common response methods we can define the methods at top level and we can reuse it everywhere so what i can do here common response methods i can define here and these are the common db operation method or you can define a separate class for all the response methods also it's up to you how you are willing to handle so let me show you here one method i'm just defining the method for okay i'm defining the method for internal server error so let me define here the okay method where i will receive the response and data so if we look at here when we are sending the okay response we are using the response and then we are sending the some documents so same thing i will get the response and we will have the data so the data availability i can check here using the not if data is available then return the status this one okay as a status code then send with data this way i can send it here so here in place of writing this complete code again and again what i can write here i can write in in short like this dot okay then pass here response then pass here data so this way instead of writing this long style for returning the response directly okay now i'm calling here and returning the status also returning the data also and there is a one more case here if there is no data if we are just only passing the response so here if you will look at we are passing the message the similar way i can pass the message in case of okay also so it would be here message okay and here in message label also i can mention the okay this way so this is the way i just defined for okay the same thing can be done here for others one let's say for internal server error for created so that we can make it short and what would be the benefit here is the part of the base controller so in each controller these common response methods would be available so don't need to write this complete code again and again just call the these methods for sending the response as a okay for sending the response as a created it's simple so what i'm doing here i'm not going to write the methods for each type of status code i'm just going to use it now so these are the methods here for created unauthorized forbidden not found conflict internal server error so these others methods i just copied from my existing code i'm just using it now so now here directly i can call my internal server error method so this dot internal server error what it is expecting it is expecting the response and it is expecting the error this way so this code is now became short and these are the common response method we have specified so 
as per your requirement you can also move this common response method into a separate class also it's up to you i'm not creating the separate class i'm putting all the methods over here to simplify the things so here also i can change it for add update and delete so here in place of returning the complete status code uh, what i can do here now i can write here this dot created and then pass the response then pass the data that is here dot simply similar way here for internal server error also now the things became short and reusable also so that we can use them again and again similarly we can write the code here for update delete by id and get by id also if you will look at in the base repository already i have written the code for update read by id find by id the same code i need to write in my base controller also so what i'm going to do here i'm just going to reuse the same thing again so that i we can quickly complete it so i'm just going to copy the code here so there is a code here for update where i will receive the id here in the request parameter if you are willing to use it you can use it here if you're not willing to use it you can leave it so right now i'm not using it i'm just leaving it here now for delete also it is a delete by id where i'm just calling the repository delete by id method calling the ok internal server error here also it's ok and internal server error so my base controller is now ready with all the crude operations which will available for category controller so now to write the code for product controller is now pretty much easy i don't need to write so much code over there just write just add a class for product dot controller dot js and as we have written the code for category similar code i need to write for product also and in place of category just replace it with product so product repository we have not added i will add it let me complete the code for product controller first this one product repository product controller it will not run fine because we don't have the product repository same way quickly complete the code for product repository also it's just a copy paste product dot repository so you can see how the things we simplified by implementing the repository design pattern and by implementing the base controller pattern now the things are easy you don't need to write the same code again and again so it is here product uh, product here now let me define here product product repository and here it should be the product uh, right now i have not specified any specific method in the specific repository that sample also i will show you but first complete it with common methods for product and category so this product repository looking fine then product controller it's looking fine now let me complete the routing for product also so here there is a category routes similarly i will define here for product routes dot js and let me copy the same thing from category routes to product routes and in place of category it would be just product so let me do it here for product controller so it is my product controller now so these method will available now to each controller get all and add so whatever we have defined in the base controller we will get here now so in the base control if you will look at it say get all add update delete by id and get by id 
same we can define here in product routes and in category routes also let me check whether the server is running fine or not you can see my server is running fine without any issue let me check for product also whether it's responding or not product make a send request okay it is showing us the error 404 error so make sure i add it in the category the product routes in api routes oh i have not added in the api routes so make sure we add it in these in for product also so product i add it here it would be here product dot routes now it is fine here let me check the server it's running fine and check it through the postman now i think something is not correct if you look at it is showing the error like a http status is not defined in base controller so let me check okay so the thing is here when i copy the code that time i did the mistake so it is here http status codes not http status so this text would be replaced by http status codes like this way so if you will check it here now everywhere i have replaced the things with http status codes perfect so here it became double so let me remove the double here because i use the option replace all so http status codes it's looking fine now check server is running fine now let me test it again now where it is missing okay it is saying here now http status code is not defined okay here also it has been changed at the top level it happens in case of replace all method let me try again this time you can see i'm getting here internal server error it means ap is responding now this is issue of the code nothing is wrong here now so nothing is wrong here now it is working fine so make sure in the product controller we are passing the things properly product repository we are passing here and in product repository make sure we are passing the product model also to the base repository if you will look at here i'm getting the error internal server error now let's see how we can find out where the error is coming so if you will look at here we are having the internal server error method and here i'm not returning the actual error message i'm just returning my custom error message even it is also recommended to return to the end user custom error message but for the development purpose how we can get it so use here console error and then we mention here error i'm putting here now to find out what actually error coming now let me again make the get request and this time it will console in my server side so what error is showing to showing the error here there is a reference error data is not defined in base controller class at line number 38 if you will look at in the line number 38 we are using data but here we are getting the docs so it should be here docs not the data now let me check it again now it is coming as an empty array so we fixed the error also it is coming because of type po error now you can comment out this console whenever you require you need you require to find out the error you can open it and check it again the similar way we can check here for category also whether we are getting the data or not so you can see i'm getting here category data properly for product i don't have any collection that's why it is showing empty if you will look at now we don't have any collection for products in the express ap database that's why it is returning me empty array so in this way our api is testing for controller as well as product and we have reused the common code at repository level as well as control label 
so this is the way how you should design your api so that the maximum code you can reuse at controller level at repository level update and delete operations so far we have checked the retrieve operation and create operation we have not checked the update and the delete operation so code is here already written i need to just check for the update and delete operations so if you look at here in the base repository we are having the code for update and delete also even in base controller also we are having the code for update and delete also we need to just check them whether they are responding or not but before that make sure in the category routes we have specified for update and delete also so it is here update so let me define here for update and delete also so it is here let's say delete by id this way same way i can write the code for get by id also it would be here get by id so let me define here also get by id in url it's not case sensitive so this way we have defined the things for category controller similar way we can define the things for product also so let me open here for product roots file and here in place of category we need to just replace product controller class that's it methods name are exactly same so we added it now make sure code is running fine it is running fine perfectly running now let me check it so let me first add a new product first of all so we already having this category id so this category id i will pass for adding a, a new product so here let me call here a method for add make the post request and use here body it would be here raw and it would be here json data so in the json data i need to pass here in the product name let's say product name i'm passing here it would be here let's say express e book then let's have a look what the various fields we are having here so open the product model to find out the various fields here so we are having here unit price and category id so let me pass here a unit price i'm passing let's say triple nine then category id category id so here the mongodb is not checking for the reference key okay so we are not checking whether that category id is the part of the database or not but from here we need to pass it logically so don't think the mongodb is going to check it now mongodb will not check it here we need to pass it manually so use this id to pass it here so this way oh let me copy be this one and put it here like this way so now let's try to make the request if you look at now it's added here 201 as a status code message also i'm getting created data also i'm getting here for created book if you want to check it for product so we can make the get request for product to check it here get all we are getting the newly created product successfully now let me modify this existing product now so let me copy this object and here in place of post this time i will make the put request because if you will look at in the api we make sure expecting the put request let me check at the root level oh by mistake i added here post everywhere so it should be here actually 
put request and it should expect the id also like this way it should be here delete request same thing i need to do here for category also it is here put in copy paste it happens you forget to change the verb so it should be here delete then delete by id and here also it should be here delete by id so this way i'm passing the one root parameters in update and one root parameters in delete also so this should be perfect here now and here in the get by id also we need to pass in the id here like this way otherwise it will not return us the data so this is my get by id this is for put and this is for delete perfectly we have specified now now let me make the put request here so it is here put request i'm making and it is here let's say update and here i'm expecting one parameter at url i'm just mentioning there what value you are willing to change at some link to change the value here 1019 and it would be here let's say express interview question and answer ebook i'm passing here now for updating its value if everything is fine it should update the value but make sure your server is running fine let me verify it's running fine and let me check it by making the put request so you can see here it's updated A status code is 200 but if you will see here it is returning us the previous data it never returned the updated value it always return the previous value to verify it let's again make the get all request or you can use the get by id then pass the id whichever you are willing to get i'm passing the id so it will return us only one product now based upon this id so you can see here the value has been updated here express interview question and answer ebook and 1099 so perfectly the crude operation are working fine i have shown you create retrieve update here now let me check for delete also for delete i need to make here a delete request with the id you don't need to pass anything in the body it's empty now let's make a delete request send oh there is an issue here while deleting the things so it's saying me for not for error so make sure we are passing the proper method so method name is delete by id note the get by id so make sure you are properly passing the name it is here delete by id same you can check here it is delete okay not the delete by id so let me mention here delete only delete this way now let me make the delete request it is now deleted it is showing us the deleted object if you want to check it here make the get all request method to check it whether it's responding with all or not get all now make the send request nothing is coming so here better way is here to define the things let me change it should be here get only it should be here only get because we are passing the things here properly so proper ways here use only get this way now there is no confusion like delete by id update by id it's creating the confusion so i just simplified it get for getting all records get then pass the id for fetching the single record update then pass the id for updating the existing record delete then pass the id for relating the existing record so this way now there is no confusion you can see so i can check it with category because it category label we is still having the things it is now get it is returning me get by id pass id here it's coming now for update it should be here now update then in the body you need to just change the value here and pass it here update 
so let's say it is here my box and whatever you are willing to update do mention at the top level let's make the put request update it's updated now you should check it by making the get by id request it is here get you can see it has been updated with my box now it has been simplified here so this is the way crude operation we have completed successfully using the repository pattern and controller pattern here in express.js async and await so in node.js even in javascript we write the asynchronous code using the callback function but starting from es8 now we are having the async and await keyword using these two keywords we can now write the asynchronous code or you can say the non-blocking code so now async and await is a no is a new way to write the asynchronous non-blocking code starting from es8 so make sure when you're using the async and await so in the older version of browser it is not working but the code which we are executing here it's running on the server side so node.js already having the support with the es8 features so don't need to worry about here but the same thing when you will try with the javascript in the client side so in the browser which are not supporting the es8 it will not work so before the async and await we use the the callback and the promises but starting from es8 async and await is just a syntax sugar built on the top of promises but it cannot be used with the plain callback or not callback so whenever there is a requirement to write the promises so in place of writing the plain javascript promises with the help of async and await that code can be simplified so async and await coding style looks like the synchronous coding style so as we write the code for the synchronous method the similar coding style the async and await provide to us but don't think it is a synchronous it is actually asynchronous but style will look like as we write the code for synchronous so when you will use here async and await so what would be the advantages so advantage would be here the code would be concise and clean so now you don't need to write a lot of code to write the code for asynchronous method now code would be easy to understand and clean also and if you are already from the background of dotnet and the java so they are already having async and await keyword for writing the asynchronous code even there is a now better error handling when you're using the async and await because before async and await we need to do here the chaining of promises method but with the help of asynchronous and await in within the same method block we can do it in better way even it's supporting the conditional statements which are not supported by the chaining of promises before so sometime it happens a promise you are willing to execute on a specific condition but there might be more than one promises there so in that case also async and await will help you it having the support for intermediate values so one promise output here you can assign to a variable do some manipulation after that you can pass it as input to the another promise so that time also the async await will help you a lot and understanding the concept also of the asynchronous method chaining now you can debug the code also easily before the async and await so code debugging were difficult when we are doing the method chaining in case of promises and here the await can be used for the both synchronous and asynchronous expression so the beauty of await is here whether you are writing the synchronous code whether you are writing the asynchronous code it can be used but make sure when you are using the await keyword that method you have decorated with async keyword await you cannot use in a normal function await can be used within a function that is decorated with async keyword 
So let's see how we can use the async and await in our code. Using async and await in the code. So let me show you here the way how we can write the asynchronous code with the alpha of async and await keyword. So we will look at in the base repository. Here we have written the code using the mongoose. And in mongoose, written here the enable object. So mongoose API is the enable. It's not actually every time it is returning the promises, it is the enable. If you are willing to learn about the the enable, you can find out here the information the enable JavaScript. So here you will find out what is the the enable JavaScript. So here in MDN Mozilla Developer Network, you will find out the information what is the enable. So the enable always written an object which is having the then method. So if you will look at here in the code also what we are doing. Wherever we are consuming this base repository, if you will look at in controller, we are consuming it and we are using here then method. So here the API of the mongoose is thenable. It always return a then method. If you want to learn about the thenable, you can refer this document how the thenable works. So thenable works like the promises works over here. So here what I can do here using async and await the code I can convert into the more simplified way. So this is the base repository. So it is returning here a thenable object. But here by decorating it with async I can return here promises. So now it is returning the promises. Even what you can do here, this response you can assign to your variable, let's say where data, where data. And finally, you can return the data here. So this data would be the promises object here. So this is here now promise. Sometime it happens, this response you are willing to store in a variable and that variable you are willing to pass as an input to some other request. So that time what you can do here, you can use here await. So it will await until this will not return the response to me. That response will be stored in this data variable and this data variable I'm just going to return as a promise. So this is the way when you are using the async function. So whatever the data you will return from here, it can be a primary data, it can be a JavaScript object that would be written as a promise. So it's not a simple JavaScript object like JavaScript collection. It is a promise now. So don't think it is a simple object, it's a promise. And here we are resolving the promise here. So it is about resolving the promise. So because promises always resolve. So if you're willing to learn about the promises here, you have mentioned the things. So promises can be pending, fulfilled, rejected. So these are the promises is available. So what I'm doing here, I'm just resolving the promise. So whenever you are willing to get the data from the promises into resolve it. So that's why you don't need to call the resolve method explicitly because when you are dealing with the promises, you need to call the resolve method explicitly. With async and await, the code become clean and simple to understand. So only using this await keyword, I will resolve the promise because async and await are wrapper around the promises. So what are the pure promise of uh, the pure promise concept we have in JavaScript? Now that has been simplified with the help of async and await keyword. So if you are from the background of .NET and Java, you can easily understood it because there also we are having the similar concept. If you want to check it, whether I'm getting the data or not, you can console it here like this way. It will console the data in the console and finally it will return the promise. So this way the code has been simplified using the async and await. 
same I can do with each method now this way so whenever you are willing to return the promise from a simple JavaScript object just decorate that method with async so now whatever you will return from this method now it would be a promise object and that promise we can resolve wherever we are accessing it let me check it here you can see still it is running fine and let me fetch the category now so we already having a one category let me make the get request to get all the category look at this code i have written with method find all not get by id i like find by id uh, let me check it here i'm making the send request so you can see there is no difference here i'm getting the data but if you will look at in the console in console i'm getting that object which is which is resolved by the await keyword here but let's say if you're not mentioning here await i'm putting here only only this way so what will happen again make the get request i'm getting the data here but here i'm getting here promise pending actually it is not going to resolve the things over here if you're willing to resolve it you need to call explicitly resolve method this one to resolve the promise so instead of following the typical promise syntax like typical using the promise methods here with the help of async and await that code is now simplified so just mention it await simply now you will get the data here now so this is the beauty of async and await to deal with the promises and to create the promises whenever you are writing the asynchronous code in your node.js even the same style you can follow with angular and react.js also but make sure these things are supported over there so this here resolving promise so we have done with async and await at the similar way you can use it anywhere whenever you are willing to do it gulp so if you look at now our api is ready for the deployment but before the deployment how we can automate the build process so in node.js we are having the gulp that is the widely used task runner the people are using so gulp is an open source a stream based build tool for the javascript so whenever you are building the javascript based application there you can use gulp to automate the build process and the gulp is built on the top of node.js and it always used for automating the build process it can be used to automate the testing deployment and the release process and gulp is completely based upon the stream as we have the stream in node.js similar way gulp is using over here so in case of a stream it never create the temporary file in between it directly write the output to the file system this is the workflow of the gulp here so it will read the file from your drive so we, we mentioned there src in the src we mentioned the file and there in between we do the modification with the alpha pipe method so what are the modification you are doing here you can do one time two time three time and finally what would be the final output of the modified file that is going to write to the file system again so in one shot it is going to read the source file and finally it will give you the destination file so that's why gulp is faster than other javascript based build tool because before the gulp the people use grunt but nowadays the people preferring the gulp because gulp is faster than grunt and it's providing the better things as compared to the grunt here so same thing i'm just going to do in my application now to create the build to automate the build process here for the different different environment you can use the gulp instead of doing it manually build task automation using gulp now let's see how we can use gulp 
to automate our build process for our Node.js application. So our API is ready here. So what I can do here, I can install here the Gulp package. And Gulp is here, development dependency, not the production dependency. So let me add a new terminal here and install the Gulp as a development dependency. It would be here save then this dev. So here this save this dev flag is here to add it as a development dependency, not the production dependency. Let me install the Gulp here. So we'll find out here right now we don't have any dev dependencies option. But after installing the Gulp, you will find out the dev dependencies option also here. So you can see it has been installed successfully. Now for using the Gulp, we need to add here a file at the root label, Gulp file. And if you will look at Gulp is now as a dev dependency. So what I'm doing here, I'm adding here a file at the root label, Gulp file dot js. So file name should be exactly same. If you're willing to learn about the Gulp, so you can refer the gulpjs.com. Here you have mentioned everything, how you can get started with the Gulp for automate the task here. So they have mentioned all the things. Let's say what is the SRC API? What is the, the destination API here? So they're having the various API. So in our Gulp file also, we will do the same thing. So we will import here a Gulp module. Then we will get here SRC and destination. So let me define here the same thing. So let me define here constant. So it is here constant. And then let me import. It would be here a require. Let me require it from Gulp. Gulp. I'm just going to import here SRC. And then it would be here for destination. This way. So now we can define here task. So we can define here multiple tasks like whatever the JS file are the part of this root folder. We need to copy and put into a separate folder with the name release. So here we will create a folder release. In the release folder, we will put the things here. So here I can define here a function for copying the files. So let me define here the source path. So source path I'm defining here. So from the root label, let me copy everything. So it would be here dot slash and whatever the folders we are having, just go into those folder and copy all the files which are having the dot js extension. So this is the way we have defined here source path. And for better way, what we can do here, let me define here a folder src. And in src folder, let me remove all these folder here. So all these folder we should remove in the src. So model also and controller also and these routes also. So now everything is the part of this src folder. So now it is better to manage. So the VS code is very smart. It's automatically update all the things. If you will look at in the app.js, it's it should add here now src. So make sure path is now properly here src slash roots. Otherwise we will get the error. So make sure my server is running properly without any error. So let me start it again, not more. Okay. So few references, it's not updated properly. So make sure the config db is properly mentioned like this way. Now you can see it is running perfectly now. So what I did here, now everything I just move to the src folder for better code management. 
now in the gulp file in place of this i will need to mention here src then this way so now we can create here a release folder where we will define the things so let me define here the destination path it would be here destination path and the destination path i will define here release release and the release i will put the code here complete code this way i'm just going to put my code in the release folder now finally i use here the gulp src configuration to manipulate it so in the src let me pass here source path so from the source path the src will read the file and how you are willing to manipulate so for manipulation i will use here pipe method and we are not doing any manipulation i'm just going to copy the file from source part to the destination path so using the dst i can directly mention the things so dest then pass here dst path we are just doing copy and paste that's it so finally this is the operation we are doing here using this server function so we just copied the things only from the src folder we need to copy the things from the root folder also so we need to define here one more function for root so let me define here one more function for root label file let's say name is main and as a similar way we define for the server just do one thing let's me make it proper it is let's say src and here actually should be the src folder not the root label because now everything is a part of the src folder let me copy the things and define for root label file so for root label let me define it there are more than one file app.js environment file and there is a packet.json file so there are multiple files here so i need here now array so i'm just defining the array for having the multiple file so app.js file i'm using here then use here package.json file then here you can mention the environment file so define here the environment file also it would be here environment file and just define the destination so destination would be here release at the root level these files would be here now with these tasks we can run in a series using the series here so let me import here series so that we can run all the tasks in a series and then finally export all the tasks here using the default export dot default and using the series i can export all the tasks here one by one so one is here src then main so here we are just going to copy everything in the src folder using the src function and we are going to copy everything from the root folder to this release here and these two function we are executing using the series here so make sure name is correct here as rc now let me run here gulp so now what we can do here using the gulp now we can execute this default task so i'm just defining here these two function in a series and this is the default task is going to be so using only gulp i can execute it a gulp but if you look at here i'm getting the error the reason is here src we already having at the top level so this thing should be changed so let's say i'm just give here the name server was perfect name here this one server and here also i'm using the server so that there is no confusion server and main now let me define the again gulp 
and you can see this time it's created here my release folder with entire things src environment file app.js then packet.json now this release folder need to deploy wherever you are willing to deploy this node.js application similar way you can define here multiple tasks like one task for your testing environment one task for your production environment and here based upon the environment setting the things would be changed so every time you to just change the environment here so you can have the multiple environment file based upon that it can handle the things for you deployment.is your node.js application you can deploy anywhere wherever you are willing to deploy you can deploy it on microsoft azure you can deploy it on aws here i'm just showing you the way how you can deploy your node.js application on your local ies so make sure you are having the windows machine i'm already having my windows machine and you have configured ies properly so this is a shortcut command through which i can access my ies so this is my ies which already configured on my machine and here i can create a application but before creating the application make sure you have downloaded the ies node module so we need a module to deploy a node.js application so just make a search for ies node module you will find out this github path from here you need to download the ies node module here so now this is the official branch now as your IES node. If you will go there, you will find out on the complete way how you can set up it here. So this is the prerequisite for the deployment. Make sure you are having either Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8. And make sure you have installed the IES URL rewrite module. So this is the module into download from here. So install this extension. I have already installed this extension on my IES. If you will look at there is a URL rewrite module. So this option you will get when you will install this extension on your system. And after that, make sure you are having the Node.js latest release that also I'm having Node.js latest release. I don't need to do anything. Then there's option here, the IES node release. So just click on this option to get the IES node release. So here based upon your operating system, whether it's a 64 bit, whether it's a 32 bit, you can download the file here. So in my case, it is 64 bit. Click over here and it will download here a MSI file. So this file need to run on a local machine so that the IES node module it will install on the machine if you, you will kill you can check it here here in the modules option so we are having here modules then you will find out make sure you are having the IES not so this entry you will find when you will download this file and install it if you're not getting this entry it means you have not installed the IES not module so you cannot run or you cannot host a node.js application so after doing this one uh, what you can do you can create here a website let me create a website let's say my let's say i'm defining the website name express define the pool here so pool you can define anything you don't need to define anything now define the physical path the path where you will publish the code so if you look at here the code we already published here so where we have published the code we publish in the desktop express api then release this is the path i'm just going to mention over here now define the port number so i'm using let's say 5000 as a port number i'm mentioning it here this way i mapped it but still your code will not work because for the is node we need to define a web.config file also so here they have shown the way how we can define the web.config file. So for the deployment, I need to add here a web.config file. So from where I can find out the web.config file. 
so here in the repository label there is option here src and then there is option here samples and the sample i can go for the configuration so in the configuration you can find out a web.config file uh, which you can use for the deployment purpose so this is the web.config file you need to copy here as a row so let me save it here in the location so i'm going to save it in the express api root label i just mention it here now properly so it is available now and now here in the web.config file i need to change the things so just mention the path of your file your server file which is actually going to run your node.js so here in place of hello.js i need to mention my server file that is app.js i mention over here then i do mention here a rewrite rule also so make sure you are having the rewrite rule if it is not available then we need to define it here okay so if you will look at here it's not looking on the rewrite rule here and let me simplify this code also i'm already having a web.config file that code i'm just going to mention over here i just replaced this complete code and this web.config file is the part of the your source code which you can refer it here simply now i mentioned it properly now in the gulp also just add this file at the part of your build so it would be now uh, web.config and build i also add it again run the gulp to create the build again it would be here in gulp now it's added your web.config file also at the part of your release and now here what we need to do here in the release folder we need to download all the necessary node module also so wherever you will put it so obviously you will put this folder somewhere else i just putting in the same label and the same label folder i just map it so just do one thing just go into the release folder here let's say release folder and run the command npm install and i need to download only production dependencies not the development dependencies so for downloading only production dependencies so there is a flag in to mention here don't run command npm install if you will do it it will download the development dependencies as well as production dependency so just run the command here npm i then test test production now it will download all the packages which are the part of the production dependencies let me enter it so if you look at here, it's downloaded all the things in my release folder and the same release folder i just mapped with my is hosting let me restart the things and try to browse it if everything is fine it should respond my api so directly we can now access it here should be here let's say api slash category then get so still it is showing there it's an internal server error so if you will see here i'm getting the error here like the requested page cannot be accessed because the related configuration of page is invalid and it's actually issue of the insufficient permission so what is happening from the desktop the ies user cannot access the things so better way is here let's move the code in a c drive so this release folder code i'm just going to move into a c drive that is a better place to deploy the things c drive i'm already having a ies folder and let me define here a new folder with the name express and here in the express i will put my code because permission issue you will face always so in the c drive you will not face any permission issue and now let me change the path here so i'm just going to change the path here 
so there is option here advanced setting this is the physical path i'm just going to change from desktop to c drive so now it is here is and it is here express and now okay okay this way and one more thing here actually we are not running the node.js application under the dotnet clr so here there is a application pool by default it is created for us express now let me change it here by doing double click you need to do double left click and just make it as a no manage code i'm just running it as a no manage code don't mention any clr version now restart the application i hope this time it should respond now it is responding properly let me exit the api shell as category then get i'm getting the data here properly so this way we have successfully hosted our express api on is so i have shown the errors also you might face while hosting the express application on the is and those errors i also fixed in the same video so please follow the video carefully so that if you will face any issue you will be able to resolve it so now this is the way how we can deploy our node.js application on our local is server for deploying it for other server just refer the documents for deployment for deploying it on azure for deploying it somewhere else and you can deploy it properly and when i will share the code with you i will not share the node modules folder so whenever you will set up this code on your local machine so every time you need to run the command npm install at the root level so that you will configure this project in a local machine so what you need to do here when you will download it here at the express api level you need to run the command npmi so that it start using on a local machine 